Welcome again to Practice Group International, where I teach you exactly what ETS requires of you to earn a respectable passing score on your TOEFL IBT. Hello again, I'm Mr. Hearn, and I am your TOEFL tutor. In this video, I want to go over some of the things that make the TOEFL IBT seem so difficult. And we're going to talk about test anxiety and the ways we can overcome the problems that this test presents to you. All right, let's just get into it. One of the things that really gives us a hard time is just our perception of the TOEFL IBT. Most of us think that the TOEFL is very, very difficult. And in fact, when you first take it, you think, well, I know English, I've passed all my boards and my professional exams, this will be a breeze. Then you take the test and you get a lower score than you thought you should. Well, that could be daunting. And so what happens is you start to think, wow, this test is harder than I thought. So you start to look into it and you find out many people are thinking that the test was way more difficult than they thought. They've taken it three, four, five. I have students that have taken it 15 times before they get to me. I mean, that's really, really a prison that the TOEFL puts you in. So let's get past that. And what's the next thing? Well. Now you found that other people are having a difficult time and it's really hard, you go to look for ways to pass the test because you have to. And then you find that other tutors are saying, the TOEFL IBT is really hard. It's like the hardest test you'll ever take. Well, this is the good news. You know, everything is hard until you know how to do it. And then you practice a little bit, you get better at it, and pretty soon it gets easy. So what I do is I teach you how ETS requires you to work on the test so you can pass it with a respectable passing score. So here, the thing is, although we have tried the TOEFL IBT and it seems hard, and we've talked to other people and for them it's really hard, and we've gone to the experts and we've listened to them and they say it's really hard, the truth is the TOEFL isn't hard. It's just tricky. The TOEFL IBT is designed to create a lot of anxiety and confusion and extra self-talk, productive, counter counterproductive self-talk while you're testing. And that's why it appears to be so hard. But you know, some time ago, there was a man named Maxwell Planck. Max Planck was a physicist in the early 1900s. And he said that when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn to look at the TOEFL IBT in a different way so that it changes our perception from thinking that this is a really hard test to, oh my God, it's so much easier than I thought, right? That's what I get all the time. Once my students are taking my classes, two, three classes, and all of a sudden they're just like, Mr. It can't be this easy. It can be because the test is a standardized test. It has very specific rules and structures. That's what makes the TOEFL IBT fair for everyone. It has very specific rules and structures. And when you know how to take the test, it's so easy. Now, let me get into some of the things and give you some examples of how the test affects us and how it's built in, how anxiety is built into the test. Let's take a look at some reading questions. I'm sure that this is something that's gonna help you. So. Please watch the video all the way to the end because there may be something here that helps you overcome that test anxiety and then you can pass this stupid thing and get on with your life. All right, let's take a look. All of the questions you see in this video will come directly from the book, Official TOEFL IBT Tests, Volume 2, Third Edition by ETS from the people who make the test. Let's take a look at this question two. It's a detailed question. Now, looking at it, how does it make you feel? Your first reaction, how does it make you feel? Do you feel overwhelmed, like it's too much reading, or perhaps the question is long and confusing, it's difficult to understand? And what about the subject matter? Maybe it's boring to you, or maybe it's a little intimidating as well, then there's difficult vocabulary words within the paragraph. And then your choices too are very confusing. What's going through your mind? Are you thinking that, oh man, this is gonna take me forever. 
I'll never be able to pass this test. This is horrible. I've passed my boards. I know English. Why can't I just get on with my life? Well, do some of these thoughts sound familiar to you? So this is built into the test. Please understand that the TOEFL IBT is not hard. It's just tricky. ETS knows exactly how to hijack your emotions, to make you think negative or counterproductive thoughts and waste time with those extra thoughts. And so what we wanna do is we wanna know how the test affects us for each question type so that we know how to proceed in an effective manner. When I say effective, I mean to be able to identify a question type and to be able to answer it quickly, easily, and accurately so you can get on to the next question. Speaking of the next question, let's take a look at one more. Again, this is another detail question. So here you are at question number three. And again, this is another detail question. Now the question itself seems quite straightforward and easy to understand. However, when you look at the paragraph, there's a lot of reading that needs to be done. So you'll read the whole paragraph and then you look at your choices and you have no idea which choice is right. You read, reason, and try to pick the choice that seems right and either more than one seems right or maybe none of them seem right. And so you go back and you try to read more to try to understand better what you've read. And then you look at your choices again. And again, you might have been able to eliminate two and you're down to two choices that just, you just can't figure out which one's right. And so you're going back and forth, back and forth, reading, picking something. And you say, you know what? It's taking me too long. Let me just pick something and move on. Does this sound familiar? Where you're reading, reasoning, and then looking at your choices and trying to pick the choice that seems to make sense with what you've read, that is built into the test. You see, ETS knows that you're likely reading and reasoning and trying to pick the answer that best suits the information in the passage, but that isn't how the test works. See, this is not a test of reading skill. It's not really a test of English at all. The test of English as a foreign language is not a test of English. It's a test of college readiness. They want to know if you have certain study skills that you'll need to use to be successful while attending university in the United States. Now, if you're not, in, if you're not needing to attend university and you just need to pass this so you can get your license and start working, sorry to tell you, but you still have to do things the way ETS requires you to do them, or you won't be able to pass the test. They know exactly how you think and exactly how to trick you. Remember, the test isn't hard, it's just tricky. Let's take a look at another question and see how this one makes you feel. So here we are with another question three, and in this case, this is a negative detail question, which I call an accept question. And why do I call it an accept question? because it has the word except in all capital letters. So it makes it easy to identify when I'm in a hurry. Now, looking at this question, right from the start, how does it make you feel? Is it intimidating? Do you believe it's gonna take a long time to read and try to reason out the correct answer? These thoughts may be going through your mind because ETS knows exactly how to manipulate you and how to make you think extra counterproductive thoughts. You see, we often read way too much. And if you read too much during the TOEFL IBT, there'll be more than one choice that seems right, and it'll be confusing. You have to learn to read less, understand more to get a higher score. Let's take a look at another question and see how this one makes you feel. Now here we have a question nine. This is an insert sentence question. Many insert sentence questions have long paragraphs. And so they seem to be far more difficult than they are. This one, however, has a very short paragraph. However, when you read your bold sentence, that is the sentence with the dark print, and you try to fit it into your paragraph, it just doesn't seem to fit anywhere, does it? I mean, trying to reason this out, at first you think, oh, this is an easy one. Whew, 
And now I'll be able to answer this quickly. But when you start trying to reason it out, it just starts getting more and more confusing. And again, you find yourself losing your confidence. All right, so this brings me to a strong point. You see, we have anxiety when our reality doesn't match our belief system. So when you look at a question, you think, oh, this is going to be an easy one. And then you go to the paragraph and you read it. It might only be two or three sentences. Let's say that your question is an easy, short question. It's direct. You look at your paragraph. It's only two or three sentences. You read your paragraph. And then you look at your choices and nothing seems to make sense. And you're thinking, wait a minute. Let me read my paragraph again. So you read your paragraph again. You go back to your choices. And again, the choices don't seem to make sense. And now you're thinking that maybe I don't understand English as well as I thought. And so you go back and forth and back and forth and all the while wasting time and losing your confidence, knowing that this is just the first step, the reading section. If you don't pass the reading section, why bother with the rest of the test? But of course you do because you have to. This is all by design. ETS knows exactly exactly how to trick you into reading too much or by making you believe that the question is going to be really hard or really easy so that the reality doesn't match up with your belief system. This is what makes the test so hard. It's the psychology of the test. The test itself is actually pretty easy once you know how to do it. And if you watch my videos, you'll see that I take you step by step through each question and I show you exactly how to understand the question, how to find the clue in the passage that is related to the question, and how to eliminate wrong choices based on the rules of the test. And when you know how to do it, it gets easier and easier, just like tying your shoes, right? When you first try, you might try it yourself because you've seen other people do it, and it just doesn't work out, right? Our little fingers, our little four or five-year-old fingers just, just don't work the way that we think they should. And then we look at adults and we ask them, we watch them and see how they tie their shoes. And they seem to be able to do it really easily, so fast in fact, that you have to ask them to slow down and show us how to do it. So they slow down, they show you how to do it, and then you try it and it still doesn't work very well because you need to know the steps, the procedures and why you're doing the procedures. And once an adult takes the time to show you step by step how to do something. And then you practice it step by step. And then you find out that it works. Wow, it really works. And then you try it again and it works again. That's what I do. I take a very difficult test and I break it into small pieces and I show you how to answer questions one piece at a time so that you know that this works and that builds your confidence and your competence. So when you take your test, you pass the stupid thing and get on with your life. All right, so we know that the reading can be really challenging when we don't know how to take the test. And as you watch my videos, you'll realize that it's exactly what Mr. Hearn is telling you, that the test is not hard, it's just tricky. But when you know how to take the test, it's so much easier. But there are other aspects to the test, aren't there? What about the listening section? Let's talk a little bit about the listening section. Maybe this is the part that's giving you the hard time. You know, some of my students are very, very intelligent people. Some of them, let me think back. No, all of my students have been very accomplished, very intelligent, highly educated people. Some of them, their English skills need to be improved because they just don't have enough experience. But many of them have excellent English skills and they're still stuck behind this stupid test. So what makes the listening section so difficult for you? Well, maybe you're a person who really understands English and you're trying to write down everything you hear, especially in the lectures. And some of these lectures you listen to and we don't know what they're gonna ask us on the test. So we're writing everything, furiously writing and taking notes and taking notes. And then when you go to answer the questions, you have too many notes right? It's just like overwhelmed. Or maybe you're one of those people that is trying to take notes and while you're writing, you're not listening. And so you miss things. 
And when you miss something, you're like, oh my God, I missed that. I'm not gonna be able to answer that question. I hate this test, right? And we get that emotional spiral about how we're not going to be able to pass the test. You know, ETS understands that when you tell yourself something, it becomes your reality. So when you tell yourself that you're not gonna be able to pass the test, that becomes your reality. So you need to know how to manage your emotions during the test. Let's talk again about taking notes in the listening section. Did you know that the listening passages are very similar to the reading passages and that they're not gonna test you on everything. There's a lot of extra information in the passages that you're not gonna be asked about so you don't need to take notes on everything. You may be saying, but Mr. I don't know what questions are gonna ask me so I have to take notes of everything. Well, it is a standardized test and they have very specific ways that they tell you things in the passages so that you'll know what to take notes on. They ask very similar questions every time and they give information in a very specific way. So if you know what to listen for when taking notes, you'll take fewer notes. And speaking of listening, understand that your brain is so much smarter than you know. You're recording everything. Your brain is recording everything from before you were born while you're in the womb to the point that you pass away. Your brain is recording everything. So you say, so why don't I do well in the listening section? Understand that your mind loves your voice over anything else. So while you're listening, ETS has a way of making the passages seem a little confusing or long, or maybe they're talking really fast. And so you start this little self-talk saying, they're talking too fast. I can't take notes. I hate this. It's horrible. Let me just, let me just listen and take notes again. And then you do your best. While you're saying those things, you're missing what is being said that you're going to have to, and you, the information you're going to have to use to answer questions. So what happens is when you get to that question, all your brain knows is, they're talking too fast. This is too hard. I hate this test. I'm going to have to test again. And none of those thoughts are the choices. So how do we overcome that? Well, first of all, know that you don't have to take a lot of notes. In fact, take fewer notes, but more, uh, more relevant notes is what you need to do. We need to listen more, listen more and write less. So what you're going to do in the listening section is you're going to know what you're listening for. And then when you hear those cues, you're going to say, oh, I need to remember this. Tell your brain, remember, they could ask about this. And then your brain's going to go, oh, and it's going to record that information. And you're going to write down two things. What are they talking about and what they say about it? And you're not going to write down full sentences. No one's going to check your notes. In fact, they're going to destroy your notes after the test. So what you're going to do is, this is the trick. This is the trick to passing the listening section. You're going to listen for certain key things that are being said. And then you're going to say to yourself, listen, this could be important. And then when you see the question that they're asking about that, you're going to ask yourself, what they say about that? And then your brain is going to replay the recording in your mind. And then you're going to look at your choices and you're going to eliminate choices that either not mentioned or it's different than what you heard in the passage. Again, you're going to listen. You might look at your notes because in your notes, you'll have a topic to the question. And then that topic is in your notes. And so you say, what's the question asking me about? You look at your notes and when you write things down, it creates physical memories in your brain. So as you write down the name of that topic and a couple of words, just a couple of words of what they say about it, that'll trigger your memory to say, oh, what did they say? And your brain will play that recording. And you don't say which one of these choices matches what it says. You say, which of these choices is different from what's stated in the passage or not mentioned at all? Please understand that there are no right answers on the TOEFL IBT. There's only the best answer. And I'm talking about the reading and listening sections. There's no right answers in the reading and listening sections. There's only the best answer. And that's the one that's left once you've eliminated wrong choices based on the rules. And the rules are any choice that is not mentioned in the passage is wrong.
even if it's true in real life, you may be an expert on the subject, but if the information in that choice is not mentioned in the passage, it's wrong. And anything that's different from what's stated in the passage, and I mean really different, it's not possible. Simply wrong because that's the rules. Speaking of knowing what's in the passage, there are some tutors out there, and I've seen this in books, and I've heard this from tutors, saying that you need to study up on different subject matter and prepare yourself for the TOEFL IBT so you'll be ready for all the different subjects. I cannot emphasize enough how ridiculous that is. It is such a waste of time. If you've been doing that, please stop. If you've been studying five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 hours a day for your TOEFL IBT, please stop. You should not be studying more than one hour a day for any section. One hour is all you need. When you know what you're doing, then it's easy to practice, right? And you can practice less and have a far more uh, productive practice session. When you don't know what you're doing, all the practice in the world is just going to make you more frustrated. But when you know how to do something right, you just practice a little bit just to reinforce that, yes, you do know the procedures and that you can answer the questions quickly, easily, and accurately. So back to what I was saying about not reading, not learning about the subjects, here's why. You see, ETS is not a test of understanding. You're not learning anything on the TOEFL IBT. In real life, we study and we learn a subject and we answer questions based on what we learn. But on the TOEFL IBT, it has nothing to do with real life. In fact, if you remember anything from the passage after you finish your test, you did it wrong. No one is going to ask you what you learned on the TOEFL IBT. All they're going to ask you is, what was your number? What was your score that you received? When you're reading, all you're doing is looking at what kind of question is it? What's the question asking me about? What does my passage say about that? And then find your clue in the passage and eliminate wrong choices based on those two rules of not mentioned in the passage or change the meaning of what's stated in the passage. Now, there's a little bit more to it than that, of course. It's a little more challenging, but I do take you step by step into how to answer the easy, medium, and hard questions. Okay, I got a little off track there, but let's get back to what causes anxiety on the TOEFL IBD. I mean, besides, if you just think that the test is hard, when you believe it's going to be hard, it's going to be hard. When you know how easy it is, it really is easy. And if you take, if you read too much, or if you if you misunderstand a question, you're going to have difficulty in the reading section. If you take too many notes in the listening section, and you think that you need to listen and understand and take notes and then pick the answer that's right, you will have great difficulty in the listening section. But there are easier ways to overcome those things step by step i show you exactly how to do it now what about the speaking section do you have any anxiety about the speaking section are you afraid that maybe your english skills aren't good enough or maybe you have an accent and you're trying to overcome that accent so you can do better in the speaking section maybe you're so afraid that you're actually buying templates that people sell or using templates that you found out there or maybe you're using those special vocabulary words that are going to guarantee you a higher score. If that's you, stop it. It's a waste of time and money. And you'll never, ever, ever be able to pass the TOEFL IBT using templates and special vocabulary words. In fact, I know that because ETS penalizes you for using memorized responses. And they're so hard to use anyway because often they don't go with the information from the questions that you're given. So you're trying to figure out how do I fit this information that I've been given into these templates. It's just not a fit. It doesn't work. If you're struggling with getting higher than a 22 in the speaking section and you're using templates, stop using templates. Okay. Stop doing what these other tutors are telling you. I just have to say that a lot of stuff being taught that is absolutely wrong. Absolutely wrong. There are tutors teaching you that you should be interpreting what you hear. 
and then giving your interpretation or opinion and be sure to give a conclusion. Every one of those things is absolutely wrong. You see, the speaking section is so much easier than most people think. How do I know that? Well, I had a testing center for five years and I know how to score your responses. So I know exactly what the graders are listening for. And I know that they're not listening for any of those other things. In fact, if you say all those other things, they're like another one of these, eh, right? Here's a two, test again. But if you know what ETS requires of you and you know how to structure your response according to the purpose of your response, the speaking section is so much easier than you might think. And your English grammar may not be excellent. It may be intermediate, but you can still earn a high score on the reading or speaking section, even if you make mistakes. You can have an accent and get a high score. So if you're trying to work on your accent, you can stop working on your accent. You don't have to speak like American, right? Besides, what does an American speak like? Depends on where you're from. If you're from the South, right, you're going to have a little Southern drawl. So what about that accent? You're going to practice and have a little Southern accent? You see, it's just ridiculous. ETS never says that you cannot speak with an accent. What they say is that you have to, if your accent is so strong that we don't understand what you're saying, that you're going to have to learn to enunciate or pronounce your words a little clear. That's all. And the speaking section can be intimidating because stage fright. I mean, I have students that speak English perfectly. We talk about a lot of things besides the TOEFL. And then when I put the recorder on for them to record themselves for a speaking question, they're just like, and they start laughing or they don't know what to say. They're afraid of making mistakes. Is that you? That you speak so well in English, but when I turn on the recorder, you just make a lot of mistakes because you're trying to be perfect. I mean, it's an important test, right? We need to get past this. So we're trying to give the best answer we can and to prove that we really know English, but that's not what ETS wants. ETS wants to know, hey, do you know how to take notes? of the important information, what ETS thinks is important, not what I think is important, not what you may think is important, but what ETS thinks is important. And can you summarize what you've heard in the way that ETS wants you to do it? That's all it is. They're asking you, hey, can you take notes? And can you respond the way we want you to, according to the rubric, okay? Rubric, it's just a fancy word for rules, right? Rubric is the elements that the graders are listening for that they are giving you your grade on in the speaking section. Let me give you a little insider information. The graders, they're not really scrutinizing over how you're speaking. In fact, they're not trying to give you a low score. Did you know that you don't start with a zero? Everyone thinks they start with a zero and they have to speak really well you know, to get that better score. But that's not true. The fact is you begin with a perfect score and you lose points for every little element that the grader is listening for that you're leaving out. For example, you see, when the grader is grading, they don't know your name. They don't know who you are. They just know that they have an account that they sign into. They get a bank of responses that may be 25 or 50 or 100, depending on their abilities or what they want to do. And they have your number there and they just click on a number and when they open it up okay they know they have the question or they have some notes for the question and they have a list of questions that they have to answer yes or no did you answer the question in english only yes or no click and did you speak clearly yes or no click did you answer the question completely yes or no click did you have any long pause or extra words like uh or um yes or no click did you have relevant reasons, examples, and details for the first question and accurate reasons, examples, and details in the other three questions? Yes or no? Click. Did you have connection words and phrases? Yes or no? Click. And did you have proper grammar? Yes or no? Click. And did you have any complex sentences? Yes or no? Click. And then they hit submit. They don't actually give you a score. The program gives the score. All they have to do is say, 
did you have this element or not? You see, that's what makes this test fair for everyone. When they have very specific things that you're either doing this or you're not. Well, by the way, that is the secret to the speaking section, the rubric. It's all about, are you obeying the rubric and answering questions the way they want you to? If you look at the official rubric, it's really complicated, right? It's so complicated. It's like you have to be an English, uh, a university English professor to understand it. Well, I've just simplified it for you. And if you take the course that I offer, you go step by step, I tell you exactly how to structure each response according to the purpose of that response and exactly the way ETS wants you to so that you can score 26 or higher. And if you're a pharmacist, a dentist or a teacher, you know what I mean, especially my pharmacist and dentist. You have to score 26 or higher. It's very likely that you can score 27, 28, or 29 with much more ease than you're doing now. Okay, so that's the speaking section. I mean, what does it really gives us a low score? Using the templates or those fancy vocabulary words, saying things the wrong way because we've been taught to do things incorrectly, or just the anxiety of having to perform, and that's a lot. But if you know what to do, and you know how to do it, and you know that your response is gonna earn you a respectable passing score, there's a lot less stress. It's a lot easier. And the last thing that we're gonna talk about is the writing section. Not a lot to say about the writing section, except that it's very much like the speaking section, except that you're writing instead of speaking. There's a rubric a very specific rubric, the rules that ETS has for you to respond. There's a very specific structure, not a template. Not a template, there's a specific structure in how they want you to respond. And if you know the structure and you respond in the way ETS requires of you, you automatically get a respectable passing score. That's all there is to it. Know what they want. Know what ETS wants of you and give it to them in the way they want it. And they love it. They give you your passing score and you can get on with your life. That's what this is all about. Being able to understand how the test works so that you can answer questions quickly, easily, and accurately in every section. Finish this test. Take it one last time and be done with this stupid thing and get on with your life. Okay, if you have any questions, please put them in the uh, comments below, okay? And if you found anything that's helpful in this video, subscribe, like, share, help me out here, okay? Because I can't just advertise this everywhere. You are my best advertiser. When you subscribe, share, and like, ring the bell because I'm making new videos all the time. It's a new year. I'm making new videos for every question on the test. Okay, so <clears throat> that's it. If you're interested in taking TOEFL courses or if you would like a TOEFL evaluation, please contact me at the email address below. Look at the description. That's it for now. I really want you to pass this test. You know, we need you. I know you've been suffering that you should be in your career right now. If you've been stuck with the TOEFL for more than two months, contact me, okay? I can help you through this and then you can get on with your life. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.